So one of the most renowned uh, climate change deniers is a scientist by the name of Wei Huck Soon. Uh, his name is Willie. He's commonly known as Willie. That's what people call him. There he is. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you about Not So Free Willie in a second, okay? Because apparently there's some funding issues that he has. But before we do that, I want to show you a video of conservatives with their idea about how 97% of the world's scientists are in on a conspiracy where they're getting paid off by the government and their universities. So they say the scientists are influenced by money. Okay, now watch. I think the whole global warming industry is full of groupers. I think there's so much of American government that is full of groupers. These al allegedly objective consultants who are actually sort of rent-seeking remoras, sucking on the side of the Leviathan and making money off of this stuff. <laughs> Tonight, we will expose some glaring errors in this so-called science and show you how scientists, politicians, and big business have turned global warming hysteria into a multi-billion dollar industry. Wow. Mm -hmm. It takes a rocket scientist, I guess. Mm -hmm. And to believe in global warming, all it takes is a corrupt rocket scientist. That's all you need. You can, you can still hold that the climate changers are true believers, but that doesn't mean they aren't deeply invested in the whole industry of global warming. How are scientists corrupted in this process? In other words, that they would manufacture, distort the data to advance their agenda. How did that happen? Why were they willing accomplices here? Yes, so right. you don't believe in the scientists, the 98% the of the climatologists. Oh, you mean the corrupt that, ones? You mean the, the corrupt 90, ones who admit they, that, they screwed up, their, their, they skewed would, their findings? Would, it's, it's a natural human tendency to, as, as, as you business guys say, talk your book. Because the record, the temperature record of the Earth is clearly rigged. So you get Phil Jones at the CRU in the UK. I mean, he's pulled in $19 million for his organization in research grants. The temperature's got to be warming, Sean, otherwise he's not going to get the grants. GE lobbied passionately for climate change legislation and cap and trade in part because they don't build oil wells, they build, they build wind turbines. Exactly and they were going to make right. a lot of money off of it. Let's say that some loony tune wanted to postulate that the earth is flat today. Some looney turn, looney tune, at, uh, you know, some, some, some wacko from the 60s. So let's say he went out and paid a bunch of scientists and he had a pool of 100 scientists and he found 55 of them to agree. Consensus of scientists says the earth is flat. But of course, you have all the consensus in the world you want, but it isn't true. 98 How do they make the their world? living, climatologists? Telling oh, everyone it, their, their industry has to be addressed. What about 9,136 scientists? No, I don't. I, I don't. I, listen, listen. Every time, every time I hear about the scientists, when I get deep down into who they are, what their agenda is, you know, you often trace it back to the same people talking to each other and advancing a similar goal. You look at the money that James Hansen from NASA, who's in charge of the temperature over here, gets. This guy has raked in lots of money for his own self. But they were so invested in their models, and they were so in invested in the long-term politics of this. The longer this goes, the richer they get. They don't want it to end. And to say that it's settled silence, that is basically a subsidy for a certain group of rent-seeking um, uh, people who are looking for to profit off of, of, of government action. God, these conservatives are wonderful with their projection. They're so obvious, right? So their scientists take money, so they assume all the other scientists are in it for the money. So there's a a conspiracy that involves 97% of climate scientists in the world. Now, what's their conclusion? Their conclusion is the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change has reported with, quote, high confidence that without cutting greenhouse gas emissions, the world risks, quote, severe, pervasive, and irreversible impacts for people and ecosystems. So they are united in shouting in unison, look at the numbers, it's obvious what's happening and soon it's going to be irreversible. We've got to change direction. But no, the Republicans say they're all bought off, but we have the pure scientists, the tiny percentage who agree with us. And one of them is esteemed Willie Soon. And he works for the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. So he must be telling the truth. Interesting. Now. Let's go to a report from Think Progress on this. Willie Soon's papers have cast doubt on how hot the last century really was. Whether polar bears are negatively impacted by a warming Arctic, maybe they'd like to get a tan, 
and, okay, I added that last part, and concluded the sun plays a larger role in climate change than greenhouse gas emissions. So these are all the different things that he has said. In fact, he says, he has said that the mainstream climate scientists and those concerned by the causes and impacts of human-caused climate change are, quote, out of their minds. All the other scientists are out of their minds. He's the one that's right. Okay. Now, I wonder if he was influenced by money. Well, let's take a quick look at the list of people who have funded his research. Oh, will you look at that? $409,000 from Southern Company, a gigantic fossil fuel company. Hmm. $274,000 from the American Petroleum Institute. Uh, that would be uh, the main lobby for the oil and gas industry. $335,000 from ExxonMobil. I think I know who they are. $230,000 from Charles G. Uh, Koch Foundation, and if you're confused about that, the Koch brothers actually make uh, a ton of money from oil refining. Interesting. And then finally, uh, $324,000 from anonymous donations via Donors Trust, which is actually a front group for many of these same groups. Okay. So they put the money in, and what do they want? They want results. Okay, now, he says, no, I am a, he says, I am a very principled man. I'm sure you are, right? Uh, and he says, well, I got to get paid somehow, and I don't take money from the government, so I'm going to take money from these guys. If you're inclined to believe him, you might think that's a good enough excuse. Well, let's look further into this story and see what happens. In many cases, he referred to scientific papers or congressional testimony as deliverables in correspondence with his funders. So he's going to, for example, a Southern Company, and he's saying, Here's the deliverable you asked for. You gave me something, and, I'm, and in exchange, I'm giving you something back. You gave me $409,000. Now, here's a report saying, don't worry, your industry is totally fine and is not causing climate change. Oh, interesting. All right, let's keep going. Southern Company's agreement was soon, and Harvard Smithsonian gave the coal utility the ability to, to review the scientific papers and suggest changes before they were published. Ah, oh, that's it. Done. <laughs> what legitimate scientist says, oh, you fund my research, and then I'll hand it over to you, and you can edit it any way you like? Well, then that's not scientific research. That's some guy who paid you to do propaganda, and you're letting him edit your work. Okay. Now, meanwhile, of course, the lobbyists love this guy. So the American Petroleum Institute, their uh, spokesperson comes out and says, no, no, no. They say, you have a guy that is aligned and associated with Harvard University, one of the top universities in the United States, and the Smithsonian, also very reputable. See, that's the whole point. All they got to do is they got to get one scientist into a halfway reputable place. And this place sounds reputable. By the way, Harvard says, wait, 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 we're not paying this guy. This is a different center. Soon doesn't work for us. We don't pay him a salary. We didn't approve any of this. Now, the actual center itself, they got some explaining to do, right? And right now they're in the middle of panic and saying, okay, we're going to look into it. We're going to look into it. That looks pretty bad. We're going to look into it, right? But this guy's not getting paid by Harvard, but that's the whole point. You put one guy in there. The Koch brothers, we've told you in previous stories, they pay for professors at different universities throughout the country. They establish a, a fund for those specific professors, and they say, you can only hire the professors we like, and they have approval over that. So then they turn around and go look at this esteemed professor who agrees climate change is nonsense. I'm going to keep doing my oil refineries. Fascinating. And finally, if you weren't convinced of how unethical uh, these actions are yet, I'll give you one last one. Uh, over the last decade, Soon failed to disclose this funding in at least 11 of his scientific papers, likely violating guidelines in eight of those cases. You can't write a so-called scientific paper telling us how uh, climate change is not caused by man and might not even exist, and it's awesome for polar bears and not tell us the guys who funded that was ExxonMobil and the American Petroleum Institute. It is obviously and massively unethical. I showed you all those clips from conservatives before, because that's what they do, man. They assume that you're up to the same tricks they are. They're like, we pay off our scientists to pretend to be on our side. We give them cold, hard cash, and they give us the deliverables of bullshit science. So we assume that everybody else does the same thing. No, they don't. The other scientists are just scientists. They measure things, they do data, they do analysis, and they come up with facts, unlike the guys you bought off.